In today's video we're going to be using Sonic Pi to code ourselves um, a little dance track using live loops. Now live loops in Sonic Pi basically allow us to update our song on the fly. Okay, so we can code a song and have it playing and we can make adjustments to that song or add bits to it, take bits out on the fly. Okay, and we can keep that song playing and those adjustments will take place as the song continues to play. So it's a pretty cool feature of Sonic Pi. I'll just play now for you a quick example of what we're going to be making today. <laughs> Alright, so you get a bit of an idea of how that dance track is going to sound. Um, that will just repeat on and on forever basically until we press the stop button in Sonic Pi or tell it to stop in our code. Okay, so pop over to Sonic Pi now. We will get started on this. Um, if you haven't done so already, delete any text on your page so you've got an empty screen to start with. Um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to bring in some drums. Okay, we want to get a bit of a beat going in our song first of all. So what I'm going to do to start um, this, I'm going to type in something new. We're going to type in live loop. Okay, and we're going to call the first loop drums. Okay, and we're going to write the word do after that. And on the next line, we're going to tell the computer what we're going to do in this first loop. Okay, so in the drum loop, the first thing we want to do is we want to play a sound of the kick drums. That's the big drum you play with your foot. Okay, so we're going to sample a sound. And that sound is going to be called drum underscore heavy underscore kick. Alright, and then we're going to sleep for one second, and we're going to play a second sound. This time it's going to be the snare drum. Oops, so we're going to sample a sound again, and the name of this sound is going to be SN, which I assume stands for snare, and then Dolph, whatever that is. And we'll sleep that for one second, and end that little function off, or that loop off. Okay, so what we've got here, we've got a live loop, or a function, called drums. Okay, and what we're going to do inside this drums function is we're going to play the kick drum first of all, and then just wait for one second. Then we're going to play the snare drum and wait for another second. Okay, and then we're just going to loop that over and over and over again. So kick drum, snare drum, kick drum, snare drum. And we'll just keep playing on and on like that. If I press play, you'll get an idea of how that sounds. Alright, sounds pretty cool to start with. Next thing we're going to add in is, um, it's a weird little sound, it's kind of like um, some more drums getting played I guess. I'll just type it in and you can have a listen to it and you'll see what I mean. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to add in another live loop. Okay, and this time, this next loop, I'm going to call it, I'll just call it sample. And we'll write the word do, so we can now tell the computer what we want to do with this sample loop. Okay, and we're going to sample a sound. It's called loop underscore compass. Alright, and then we're going to sleep it for 8 seconds and end it off. Simple as that. Let's have a listen and see if it sounds any good. Alright, so it's definitely playing, but it doesn't sound that great because it's not in time with the drums we originally put in. Okay, so what we're going to do is going to go back into our code here in the sample function and we're going to write in the word sync and we're going to oops, sync this up with the drums function. Okay, so this line of code here will sync up this loop with the drums function up here. Okay, let's try that one more time and see if we're getting a bit closer to what we want it to sound like. Alright, sounding better but still not great and the reason it doesn't sound perfect just yet is because this loop compass doesn't quite go for the same amount of time as our drums up here do. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to stretch this sound out a little bit. So after the word sample loop compass, put a comma in. And what we're going to do is we're going to write in beat underscore stretch and we're going to make it 8. So it goes for 8 beats. Alright, now we should have this loop compass working in nicely with our drums. Let's have a listen. All 
All right, sounded pretty good. A bit slow for my liking, so I might speed it up a bit. Up the very top, I'm just going to write use underscore BPM, which stands for use beats per minute. And I'll just put in, I'll put 75 for now. Sounds better. All right, so we've got our drums sounding pretty sweet. Next thing we might do is add in some cool sound effects, kind of bassy sound effects. So we'll add in another live loop here. And we'll call this function bass. Write the word do at the end so we can now tell the computer what to do with this bass function. Um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put a synth in. So we're going to use a synth. So use underscore synth. And the name of that synth is chip bass. Then we're going to sample a sound. Okay, so on the next line, let's sample. The sound we want to put in is the bass drum or BD underscore sewn, whatever that is. And we're going to turn that bass sound up as well. So we're going to put in the word amp and make it three times louder than it usually is. Okay, so it's going to make it quite a big bassy sound. Um, we'll sleep for eight seconds and end that off. Now this isn't quite finished yet, we just want to have a listen to see if we can hear this big bassy sound kicking in. There it is. Nice. So basically every 8 beats we'll hear that big sound, um, which is sounding sweet. Next thing we might do, after that sample of the BD sewn there, what we're going to do is we're going to basically play some notes from a chord okay so i'm going to write in the word play chord and in brackets i'm going to choose the chord i want to play so in this case i'm going to do the c chord but bring it down an octave or two so the c2 chord and put a comma and choose the minor so it's the c minor chord we're going to be working with today Okay, now instead of playing the entire chord in one hit, that's probably about three notes in one hit, what we're going to do is we're going to pick out one note at a time. So we're going to put in dot choose. Now dot choose will randomly pick a note from the C2 minor chord and just play it. Okay, um, the other thing we're going to do is we want to make these notes linger on a little bit. So we're going to sustain them for seven beats. And we're also going to turn the volume down a little bit so the amp... 0.5 for the amplitude now half the usual sound um, we'll be playing at let's have a listen to that and we should have some pretty cool special effects in the background there now all right sounding pretty good probably mixed in with my dog in the background as well there um, so I apologize for that, but basically this is the tricky part here trying to understand what this does If you can just make sense of the word choose it's randomly choosing a single note from the C2 minor chord and it's going to play it Make it last or sustain for seven beats and its amplitude is going to be half its usual sound or half its usual volume all right, a little bit confusing there, but that is getting some cool special effects into the background of our song. And the last thing we're going to whack in now is just some more little electronic sounds. Um, so we're going to put in one more live loop, and we'll call this one, let's just call it effects. We'll write the word do, so we can tell the computer what to do. First of all, um, we're going to sync it up with the drums. So write in the word sync. And choose drums so it looks back up the top here at this drums function and make sure we're keeping in time with that and we're going to um, sample some sounds here again we're going to use the word choose okay i'm going to give sonic pi four different sounds to choose from and it's randomly going to pick one of those four sounds every couple of beats okay so in brackets we're going to open up some square um, brackets as well and i'm going to start with the first sound, which is an electronic sound, elec underscore blip two. And I'll put a comma and write in my next sound that I want it to um, choose from. So this one will be elec underscore twipe. Another comma, another colon, and this one will be elec underscore beep. And finally, we've got elec ping. 
and we can close the square bracket and then close the normal brackets. Okay, so what's going to happen here is the computer is randomly going to choose one of these four electronic sounds. So the blip, the twipe, the beep, or the ping. Okay, and we're going to play them every, say, two beats. So slip it for two beats and then we'll go and do it again. All right, and that's just going to keep repeating every so often. So if we play our sound again, um, let's have another listen and listen for these little beeps that come up every couple of seconds. There's one. There's another. And another. All right, so we've got those little um, cool effects taking place throughout our song. So that there is a very simple dance track, all made up, okay? It is a little bit slow though, I think, for my liking. So what you can do up the top here is change the beats per minute. Might crank it up to about 125. We'll see how that sounds. Might sound a bit more dancey. Yeah. Yeah, not bad, so that's sounding pretty cool. Now feel free to go and add in some more uh, live loops to this track if you would like, but that's all I'm going to show you in this one. If you want to record this track, what you can do is simply hit the record button first and then run your song. Okay, when you finish recording it, you just press the record button again to stop it. I'll show you how that works. So I'll press record and run it. All right, it just tells you to save up your dance track, so I'll just save it there, and that's that. Better stop that, so yeah, just start recording by pressing record, run your song, and then you just stop it when you press record again, and that will stop your song from being recorded. Simple as that. Don't forget to save it as well, so you can come back and edit it if need be. And that will probably do us for this tutorial, so I'll catch you in the next one.